Hello world, welcome to Africa. Let's talk. My name is Carlos Kofi Opon. You can always call me Mr. Beyond. Of course, today we have a very interesting conversation for everyone. So please, you have joined me. What you can do for me is to please invite others so that we can delve into today's topic. Today, we are exploring the intersection of travel and health. We will be diving deep into the essential topic of international travel and health, uncovering valuable insights to keep you safe and also informed on your next travel adventure. This conversation is sponsored by Kavala Travel Accessories and Kavala Travel Foundation. We are live on Facebook via African Let's Talk as well as KMTV Liberia and also live on YouTube via African Let's Talk. Uh, if you are in the deep of pre-travel preparations, to navigating cultural customs. We've got you covered on this show today because we have expert advice from leading health professionals and seasoned travelers. Uh, our guest today, uh, Madam Jenin Seburi, she is the travel advisor at Kavala Travel and Tour Accessories. Uh, I'll be introducing all the guests, but yes, so that is Madam uh, Jenny, uh, we also have Madam Patricia Wood. She is a travel advisor. Also, our guest for this conversation uh, is Dr. Elizabeth Dufort. Uh, she is the MD medical epidemiologist and pediatric infectious disease doctor with the Minnesota Department of Health. Uh, we also uh, have her here. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, we also have with us on the program, uh, Madam Erica Chunk. She is uh, an international health planner with the Minnesota Department of Health, as well as Susan Okutoro, advanced practice registered nurse and owner of Lively Wellness. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please, wherever you are, help me welcome our panelist for this conversation. Ladies, you are welcome. Thank you. Thank absolutely, you. absolutely. It's great to have you all here. Uh, it's it's like, wow, men don't travel or what's the situation? Because it seems there's so much excitement having ladies in this conversation. But yeah, it's great because I know ladies plan all the travels, the travels uh, that uh, we ever encounter on as families. But you are very welcome at this moment. Please, I would like to first and foremost give you at least a few seconds to briefly introduce yourself so that our viewers from around the world will know who you are. Please, may I begin with you, Madam Jenny? Yeah, good, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, my listening world, wherever you are. My name is Jenny Sibury. I'm your travel advisor of the Kavala Travel and Tours. At Kavala Travel and Tourist, we do not only say ticket or prepare people to travel, we also educate our audience. So we are here today uh, to accelerate the change towards uh, traveling uh, using our experts, our intensive network, and independence to support our traveling community. Uh, we decided that uh, we keep our traveling community safe. As we all know, to travel is to live. So we want to make travel more of a fun and everyday thing. So I'm glad. So stay tuned for the next one hour that we will share our information with you. Thank you. Thank you so very much for that introduction. Madam Patricia, please, may you also introduce yourself? Yes. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever, whatever you are um, in the world. I, my name is Patricia Woods. I am a travel professional and a healthcare professional. These are two areas that I'm very passionate about. I own a home care agency located in Lawrenceville, Georgia, and I've had um, been in the travel industry since 2008. I started with United Airlines as a, what we call reservation sales agent, and I went into the um, agency, I work as a leisure travel agent, and now I work for myself as an independent travel advisor. I enjoy it. I do a lot of group trips. I love sharing um, my passion for travel. Um, I want you guys to come on, listen. There's a lot of mistakes we make when we are traveling, from getting the proper vaccinations to, you know, what we take on these different trips. Come on in. We have beautiful, great information for you today. And I'm looking forward to just sharing the next hour with you. Absolutely. Thank you so very much, Madam Patricia. Please, uh, Erica Chang, can you briefly introduce yourself? 
Hello, everybody. Hello to everybody, wherever you are in the world. It's so nice to be with you here today. My name is Erica Chung. I am with the Minnesota Department of Health. I work as an international health planner. They're doing a lot of travelers health work. So we are putting together resources to make sure all of those who are traveling um, can stay safe and healthy and have fun. So I'm very honored to be here today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so very much for that introduction. Of course, Madam Susanna, please, can you please briefly introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. My name is Susanna Okutoro. I am an advanced practice registered nurse. I'm also a certified nurse midwife and the owner of Lively Wellness, where we provide IV infusions and also immune boostings for those who need uh, extra immune support for their travels. I am also an avid traveler. I love to travel. I love to explore new places, sometimes dangerous places where people think you should not be going to. Uh, I would take that chance and go, but I do my research and I put proper precautions in place before going. I'm so happy to be a part of this panelist and I cannot wait. Indeed. Thank you so very much uh, for speaking about your travel experiences. Uh, Madam Lex, uh, if you can unmute and, and please briefly introduce yourself. Yes, uh, my name is Liz Dufour. Um, I just want to thank you on behalf of Erica and I and the Minnesota Department of Health for having us, both to my great fellow panelists and also um, to all of you in Minnesota or other states in the U.S. or in Africa or globally. We're really uh, glad and honored to be able to be here with you and chat a little bit about Traveler's Health. Um, I'm a pediatric infectious disease doctor and public health physician. I worked a bit in global health um, in East Africa earlier in my career. Um, and um, now I'm working with the Minnesota Department of Health and Erica and others to really provide resources to help people travel safely. Wow. Thank you so much. That is awesome. Thank you so very much, ladies, for the kind introduction to your work and to yourself. I would like to begin with you on this conversation uh, with you, Madam Jenny. Please, if you can share with us the objective, we would like to know what informed this community conversation on international travel and health. Oh, please, if you can unmute. Oh, yes. Sorry. Thank you, Collins, and thank you, my fellow panelists, and thank you to the listening world out there. Like I said, uh, I will go here as travel advisor. We want to ensure that our travelers, people that are out there moving around, are safe. So we thought that we educate them and give them some information that will help to keep them uh, safe when making the trip. Mm -hmm. So what we do uh, to accelerate change, we trying to take a different model instead of just talking to our own clients. Uh, remember, everybody don't come to Kavala Travel to buy. Then what do we do? So in order to reach a larger audience, we decided that we come together using our expert, our intensive network and independence to get out to our travel community. So our goal here is to help keep our traveler healthy and safe, and also to share more information on our international travel. So we are excited about this project. Like I said, we care about our travel community. We want to continue to make travel more of a fun to travel is to live. We want to make sure that people explore the world. So that's why we are here. And thank you for my panelists uh, for coming on board to help me share the information. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so very much for that kind insight into what this conversation is all about. Of course, the next question that we have is, uh, what are some essential uh, health tips for travelers to ensure their well-being during trips? And I think this question is very important because mostly when we are planning trips, we are only thinking of, oh, have I bought my ticket? Uh, have I got my luggage and everything? And I think health really is not a thing that comes to mind, especially when we're traveling. So please, MDH, uh, any of you, Erica or Liz, can take this question. What are some of the health tips that we can actually put in place or plan for, uh, for, 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 for or during trips, I should say? 
So I'll go ahead and start and Erica can chime in on some of the great resources that she and her team have developed um, on these points uh, so that you don't have to remember all of this and we can tell you where to find those at the end. Um, but first and foremost, there are so many um, different issues and points to cover about staying healthy when traveling that the first and most important point would just be to say, talk to your doctor about it. Talk to your primary care provider, or if you're going with your family, your child's primary care provider about your travel plans. And importantly, um, visit a traveler's health clinic if you are able. Um, there are expenses that come with a traveler's health clinic that you can ask them about what those expenses would be to figure out if that is feasible for you. If feasible, that is highly recommended as the uh, best way to protect you and any family or friends you're traveling with while travel for your health. Um, but if you're unable, even just talking with your primary care provider about some of these health tips is really important. Um, Erica can chime in on some resources we have and what you can talk to them about, what should you come prepared with and what questions to ask. All right, thank you so very much, Liz. Uh, Erica, is there anything you may want to add uh, as far as essential travel tips are concerned? Yes, thank you, Mr. Beyond. If you'd be willing to go to slide two, we actually do Hello. have a couple of resources um, of where to start. Sometimes it's really difficult to know where to start when planning your trip. We have two resources here, one called Heading Home Healthy, and the other one is the CDC or Centers for Disease Control. Both of these websites linked here have a wonderful resource where you can type in your destination um, and share where you're traveling, and they will share out the information on the other side of what vaccines or medications you may need to consider. And as as Liz was sharing, you know, the best thing to do is start planning your trip as soon as possible and get in to see a traveler's health clinic. Um, but it is never too late to visit a health clinic, uh, even if, you know, you're traveling the week of and you just found out that you have to go somewhere for a family event or anything like that. Um, the biggest thing is to, to try and get to a travel clinic or a health clinic. And for those of you in Minnesota, Mr. Beyond, if you'll slide to go to slide four, we actually have a page where you can find information on what to do if your travel medication is too expensive. And this can be for all folks throughout the United States here. Um, our uh, recommendations are to ask your doctor or your pharmacist and to call around. Medications can very vary. Sometimes it's, you know, $5 or $10 um, a difference depending on what pharmacies you go to. Um, and we also have a link that will take you to vaccine information and travel clinics, a list of the travel clinics in Minnesota and uh, travel clinics bordering the states of Minnesota that folks can go to. And I will no. pass it on back to you, Mr. Beyond. Thank you so very much, uh, Erica. Of course, Susanna, do you have anything to add as far as essential health tips are concerned when people are planning for trips, especially international trips? Sure. Uh, thank you, Dr. Liz, and thank you, Erica, for those points. Uh, just to add to the vaccination piece, uh, there are some vaccines that are standard in uh, as part of uh, routine health care in Minnesota or even in the United States. So check with your healthcare provider, see if you're up to date on those vaccines like the MMR, the uh, varicella vaccine. Very important to make sure you're vaccinated before traveling uh, because there are measles outbreaks everywhere you go, now, including in the United States, but more so in other countries. So very important to uh, make sure you're up to date on all your vaccinations. If you are expecting, if you're anticipating that you will eat street foods, which most of us do, almost all of us do when we travel because you want to experience the culture, make sure uh, you talk to your provider about, your healthcare provider about maybe getting the hepatitis A vaccine because uh, it will help you help to prevent some foodborne illnesses. Um, and from the wellness standpoint, you want to make sure that your immune system is in top shape for traveling because travel can be very stressful and um, any little, any small amount of illness would, could, could uh, be very impactful if your immune system is not, uh, if, you, if your immune system is low. So mm -hmm. getting enough rest, getting sufficient amount of rest, hydration, and also proper diet leading up to your traveling date is very essential. 
Absolutely. Thank you so very much for that amazing information with regards to essential health tips when we are planning for traveling or for trips. Please, if you join this conversation, do well to share so that you can invite people, especially those who would need this conversation for the uh, traveling, especially international trips. The next thing that I would like to find out is um, if we can provide detailed information on, or at least some some good amount of information on pre-travel preparations that individuals should undertake to safeguard their health. So if somebody is kind of confused, where do I start from as far as uh, uh, these uh, information or better still, the pre-travel preparations? Uh, where do we start from? Uh, MDH, please. Uh, and again, any panelists can also chip in as well. Yeah, I, I wanna start with what Susanna started with, which is were great points that the routine vaccinations that are recommended in the US, you wanna make sure that you or your child is up to date on all of those. And when you are traveling with a young child, you wanna have a special conversation about that. For instance, we usually give the measles vaccine when a child in the US is 12 to 15 months of age. But if you're traveling abroad where there's more measles going on, um, that can be given a bit earlier. So those are there are a few kind of special considerations for younger children and getting up to date on routine vaccines. Okay. Then you wanna talk in these sort of buckets that we consider at the routine vaccines Susanna mentioned, the special vaccines for traveling, traveling, and that may depend on where you're going. So many of you may be familiar from traveling with yellow fever vaccine that's required in some countries or recommended in some countries, or the meningococcal vaccine for the area that's considered what we call the meningococcal belt in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and so special vaccines based on travel, typhoid, cholera, things like that. And then we want to think about malaria prophylaxis medications, and then other tips, like food tips to avoid travelers' diarrhea, travel tips to stay safe, things like that. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah, please. Collins, let me just come in. As a travel advice, or, uh, one thing I will always advise my travelers is to prioritize your health and safety. Mm. Before you travel, make sure you check the health advisory and travel warning of the country that you are going to. I know most of the time uh, people buy tickets from online, but I would recommend strongly that you always try to check with a travel advisor so you can ask all the questions and it can help you do some research on the country that you are traveling to to see whether there's an outbreak of any virus or sicknesses mm -hmm. that uh, will help you plan your trip where you can take some preventative measure. So it's important that travelers with all will prioritize the health and the safety before going to any country I will advise. All right. Thank you so very much. That is very important. Of course, we have a comment coming in uh, from Sammy the Chaplain. He says, this is all very helpful. Thank you indeed. Please keep your comments coming. If you have any questions, we would love for you to also ask your questions as well as we get into this conversation. So uh, the next part that I want us to take a look, uh, I believe I wanted us to look at specific recommendations, but if it has been answered already, then probably we can move on to the part about uh, cultural customs or etiquette uh, tips that travelers should be aware of before visiting this destination. So please, before I come to this, uh, do we have any information on the specific recommendations by the MDH, which has not been answered already? Okay. Yeah, well, well, I was going to defer to our other panelists to, to give tips in that regard, because that's some, uh, a point where I'm always looking to learn and grow. And my biggest advice to American-born travelers abroad is to really do a lot of listening and, and be humble and, and do your best to learn from others around you. Um, but I would, be, I would love to hear what other panelists have to say. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. So with regards to cultural customs, uh, Madam Patricia, I know you have very much involved uh, in travels and, of course, dealing with different nationalities. What would you uh, have to say uh, when it comes to observing customs and, of course, etiquette around the world? Yeah, um, pretty much I will let my travelers know um, to do some research. In fact, a lot of research. Um, sometimes I will do the research for them because I already know these things. Um, 
also you um i tell them you have to um respect the local customs um i'm going to give an example a lot of people are traveling to dubai nowadays dubai is somewhere as beautiful as dubai is they come with a lot of rules regulations and their own laws so i tell people when you're going to these places learn you know like very short faces you know little just stuff that can help you or you know now we have the travel apps so mm -hmm. the travel apps can be of great help to you um when i when i also I, i'm going to go back to where i says uh, where i said respect the customs you know we we, we um you have to dress appropriately mm -hmm. um dubai is a country where you cannot just take a person's picture you will need their you know permission to take you know in america we're used to just picking up our phones and just clicking away <laughs> in dubai you you will need to get their you know permission before you can do that mm -hmm. uh, the way we dress you know certain places you go you will need to cover up um I, um you have to also respect their personal space so some countries again that we will travel to those are rules you cannot just go up to a person you know again you got to get um some kind of um permission and then i also um ask my travelers to learn to you know for the time that you're going to be in that um location try to adapt a little bit to the local customs um pretty much that's okay it. all right is there anything else anybody wants to add as far as uh, observing culture and of course customs and etiquettes around the world before we travel uh, yes. I just want to think. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Sue. Oh, be quick. There are some things that may be legal in the United States. Um, I'm sure we can um, use our imagination that will not be legal in other states, and it's actually punishable, severely punish, punishable there. So those are things to also be aware of. Like one time I went to Taiwan, and there was a huge sign: "This is punishable by death." Wow. And I promised to check my luggage just to be sure that I don't I didn't have that substance, <laughs> which I don't usually, but it, it just put fear in me. And I just wanted to to bring that up, point that out. Indeed. No, that, that is very important. Also, Mr. Beyond, I also want to point out that we will need to respect certain secret sites. Mm -hmm. you know, like if you're visiting a temple or a mosque, you know, you will need to follow those guys guidelines before you enter those places mm, mm. wow indeed thank you so very much because indeed sometimes i think we can be ignorant of other cultures just because we are only uh, in, uh, involved with our our issues and things that happen around us but it's so very important that if we are leaving our comfort zone to other places we are aware of the do's and the don'ts about their uh, lifestyle. Of course, this is all about international travel and health right here on African Let's Talk. This program is put together or sponsored by Kavala Travel Accessories as well as Kavala Travel Foundation. And we are all being streamed live on KM uh, TV uh, Liberia as well. My panelists are indeed seasoned uh, individuals with travel experiences and education that is helping this conversation. Uh, the next thing that I would like to take a look is um, about protecting ourselves from potential health risk while abroad, because um, we may be aware that, oh, maybe when I'm in Minnesota, when I'm in the US, this is likely to be the ailments that I have to deal with. Uh, when we are traveling, at least, how do we, how do we protect ourselves from potential health risk while abroad. Uh, please, MDH and Madam Patricia, if you can help with this one. Oh, sorry, uh, Madam Patricia. Yeah, yeah. You were well, I will say one thing is you have to be very, very aware of your surroundings. That, that can help. Um, I also um, tell people to secure your valuables, mm. you know, because what you have can actually put you in trouble. So if you go, if you're walking around flashy, that can call, you know, cause a person to look at you and want to rob you. You know, mm -hmm. I also tell my people, cause I do a lot of group trips, stay within your group, stay within your group. And even on the off days where everybody is free to go off on their own, 
always make sure you're in an area that you are secure. You know, don't go into back alleys and, you know, all that stuff. I tell people also follow the safety guidelines because even when you go to a country, they have safety guidelines. They will tell you as a tourist what you need to do and what not to do. Um, and this might be a little thing crazy, but I tell people, protect your skin. You know, we have skin cancer. So I tell people, you know, protect yourself from the UV rays. I, I'm a hat person. When I travel, I wear hats. So that's how I, I'm able to protect myself. Um, again, be mindful of your health. You know, when you're there, you know what you're drinking. If you know you're not used to drinking the local water, don't drink it. You know, get a bottle of water. And one big, big point that I have for my travelers, trust your instinct. Mm -hmm. If something doesn't look right and your sixth sense tells you that this is not right, trust it. And, you know, trust your instinct. Mm, indeed, indeed. Thank you so very much. I think I like the part even about the water because sometimes I feel when people travel, they try to impress the local folks. Oh, you drink this? Okay, I also want to drink it. But you may not know how. Uh, please, MDH, uh, is there anything else you'd like to add uh, as far as protecting oneself before they embark on trips? Yeah, thank you. Firstly, I just want to say, Patricia, thank you. Those are all really good practical tips. So you've summarized that part beautifully. Thank you. And so maybe just a couple of points to add one of the first things that we'd love to talk about is this concept of people going to visit friends and relatives in the traveler's health medical field that's a term for people who are maybe going back to where they're from or going to visit family of theirs even if they're um, you know children born in, in the u.s they may be going to visit family back where family is from and so it's important to realize that people who are visiting friends and relatives do have higher risk of getting serious um, health concerns from travel compared to those who might be tourists or business travelers not visiting friends and relatives. And we can all imagine why, as Patricia mentioned, we're you know uh, going to have meals in with family and um, street foods and um, you know experiencing the culture and all of those typical ways where you would when you're from that area or your family is from that area. But we just want to share this point and that it's important to know that. Um, that this group is at higher risk of, of health threats while travel. And so you can just go ahead and take action preventatively. Um, you know, we put a lot of organizing and money into these trips and we want to be able to enjoy them and not get sick during them or after we come back and we've already taken off two weeks of work, that's hard to find to take off. You don't wanna be sick when you come back. So in addition to caring about your health, it's also about really enjoying that trip. And so as in particular for people who are visiting friends and relatives, we want to think about um, things like malaria prevention and food and water protection, insect protection, um, and all of the vaccines as appropriate. And even, even if you've lived there before, you might have lost that immunity to something like, say, malaria. So um, Erica, anything else to add there? Yeah, I would just love to follow up, Mr. Beyond, if you would be willing to go to slide five, some of the resources that we have that Dr. Dufort had mentioned about malaria prevention resources. Malaria is preventable. Um, if you are thinking about, about traveling, we have some resources available on our website um, on planning a trip overseas on what to make sure of for bed nets, you know, mosquito repellent, getting malaria medication from your travel clinic or your health clinic. And we also have a series of stories uh, showcasing some of our community here. Um, right up top is actually one of our community members, Dr. Oni and his story about his journey back home and the importance of taking anti-malarials. So we we would just really urge you to make sure to take care of yourself and your family um, when traveling abroad, as Patricia and Dr. Dufort were mentioning, like you want to make sure that it's a wonderful time. I know when I go back to see family, I also want to make sure that every single moment is spent with family and, you know, not feeling ill and uh, making sure to get malaria medications and find ways to protect yourself from insects is also um, it, other mosquito-borne diseases as well is so important. Um, and Absolutely. I will turn it back no, Great. No, uh, thank you so much. And of course, uh, talking about uh, some of the medications that we would we would recommend uh, for now, 
if you can also help us specifically with vaccinations or medications that are recommended by health professionals for travelers to certain regions. I know you've mentioned malaria, uh, please. Uh, are there specific other vaccinations that you may recommend for travelers? Yeah, so going through in those four big categories, the routine vaccines, making sure you're up to date. And as Susanna mentioned earlier, right now globally, in West Africa, East Africa, in the U.S., she mentioned, there are there's a lot of measles circulating. So making sure you're up to date on that or um, for, for kids, younger children, infants, um, you can get an early dose before travel. Um, so the routine vaccines, you, she also mentioned Hep A, same thing, making sure you're up to date on those routine vaccines. Um, and then that can include, depending on the season and where you're going, you know, COVID and flu, just you don't want to get sick while you're traveling. And so better to prevent that if possible. Um, but next, travel-related vaccines that are specific to your destination. It really depends on where you're going. But as mentioned, there, um, you know, often in, in Sub-Saharan Africa, we talk about yellow fever vaccine is either required or recommended in certain countries. So that's something that you can look up and talk to your provider about that. Um, and also um, typhoid vaccine, typhoid is a very important, typhoid fever is a very important illness that people often get um, from food and water while traveling and can make people really pretty sick. And there is a vaccine for some of the, um, for some of that. Um, and so those are some of the major ones, but there are others that you want to think about with travel. Um, and the meningococcal vaccine, which is a routine vaccine in the U.S. for children, but not all of the adults have gotten it. So you want to think about that when you're going to that portion of, of um, the affected areas in Africa. And then we want to think about the malaria prophylaxis. And as Erica met, malaria prophylaxis medications and preventions. As Erica mentioned, a big part of the prevention is in either being in air conditioned or screened in areas, or if not, um, insecticide treated bed nets and using those in malaria affected regions, um, as well as long sleeves and pants and insect repellent and effective insect repellent. You wanna use something like a DEET based or also known, there are a list of them, um, but DEET is the most commonly used that's very effective to prevent mosquitoes and that will also prevent ticks and other insects that can mm -hmm. transmit disease. And um, these mosquitoes, as many of you are aware, can also transmit dengue and all of these other um, infections other than malaria. Um, so the insecticide is good for that. And then for malaria prevention, you wanna talk with your doctor about the medicine that's best for you. And we can talk a little bit more about that if we wanted to go into more detail. And then again, the last group is other stuff, preventing just generally you know, healthy food habits, travel habits, um, avoiding stray animals. We're not uh, as used to that. So if people travel with families, their kids aren't as used to that in the US. They're used to petting uh, a nearby dog and in some other settings uh, that may be a, um, a dog that is uh, more of use to the family for protection or uh, it could be a stray dog that could be dangerous. And so we wanna be careful about that and tell our children when we're traveling about those risks. Um, mm. And then um, travel safety with roads, and food and water and sexual health safety. People are having sex when they travel. So you wanna be use the same advice we use in the US about um, condoms and safe sex. Mm, absolutely, thank you very much. I'm happy you ended on that note. Because... Yeah. Yeah, one, more, one more tip before we, we move forward. Just... Yeah, one more tip. Um, let's not forget um, motion sickness med uh, medication. Okay. Mm -hmm. That can be one. Oh, so also, a, there is medication for motion sickness? Yeah. Oh, okay. I never or knew about patch. it. So, yes, you can get it in a patch or the pill form. Oh, great. Okay. Madam Jenny, yourself, you also wanted to make an addition? Yes, I just wanted to remind all our travelers out there that it is your responsibility to gather uh, all the required documents before you take your flight. Uh, I mean, documents, uh, when we talk about documents, we're talking about your passport, your visa if required. Because uh, some of those uh, countries, they won't allow you entry if you don't have your travel certificate, your passport, or visa. So take your travel certificate very serious and very important is for your own safety. It's part of the travel requirement. 
people will say, oh, I, I went to the airport, but nobody asked for it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that it's not required. It's required that all international travelers should visit a travel clinic and just talk to the nurse practitioner or whosoever you meet in there and tell them where you're going and they will advise you on the required vaccine and medication that you will need. So okay. please consider getting all your travel documents before you travel to keep yourself safe also. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, we have a huge traffic uh, on KMTV, uh, over 300 people actually watching. Of course, a few comments coming from there. Uh, Mandela Klon Yang, Ahila uh, says, talk, uh, you, um, okay, no, actually Pauline Badio says, thanks, Jenny. The program is very informative. Thanks again, uh, panelists. And of course, uh, Mandela Klon says, oh, tell me, sickness comes unexpectedly uh, most times. Um, I believe Pauline also says, are there standard vaccine requirements for international travel? So, of course, of all the um, vaccinations that we spoke about, uh, are there standard ones that are required for international travels? The travel cleaner will be able to give you all of those information when you go there. That's why the travel uh, rule says, uh, this is a travel clinic before you make an international trip. Like I said, those documents are required. Uh, you okay. might have the chance to pass the exit, but sometimes the country that you are going to, if you don't have it, they will even send you back because you don't have your travel certificate to show that you took all the required vaccine you know, to enter. They don't want people spreading those diseases from country to country. That's why they ask that we keep ourselves safe and all travelers should adhere to the rule. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you so very much. Yes, Can I give you me time in information? Yes, you may. Okay. So uh, there are no standard uh, vaccinations for a specific country, but if you go on a travel uh, CDC website or travel.state.gov website and type in the country that you're going to, um, they will give you the list of required vaccinations uh, specific to that country. Best practice would be to try to start this research at least six months in advance um, because some of these vaccinations required, require multiple doses and they do require some time. They do need some time to work. So you want to give yourself at least six months or so ahead before, uh, to start doing the research and um, getting the vaccinations that are required. And okay. Mr. Beyond, for those Please. who would like that website um, that Susanna mentioned on slide two, we have both of those uh, listed out for folks who are following along today. There's Heading Home Healthy and also CDC. You can go in and put in your destination and it will tell you um, what vaccines and medications that you should consider. And you can bring that to your health clinic or travel clinic and have that conversation with the healthcare provider there. Absolutely. And again, and, yes, please. Oh, just agree with everybody. That was all a great summary. Thank you. Um, completely agree. And then just to tack on one more comment. Um, the most common one that ends up coming up is yellow fever vaccine. Again, as was already said, talk to your doctor about what is required. In some countries, it is required upon entry and you need the card with you. In some countries, it's not required, but it's recommended. And in other countries, it's only required if you, so you might enter that country, you may go to a neighboring country or another country by plane. And then when you try to come back in, if you'd been in that other country, um, let's say in Africa, it may be required in some and not others. But if you travel to a couple locations, you may need it to go back into that um, original country. So it gets specific, as they mentioned, talk to your traveler's health um, provider, um, but that is the most common one. And I just want to mention that in those resources that Erica has shared for Minnesotans, um, there's a list of where travel, yellow fever vaccine is only available at specific clinics, travelers health clinics. That's one you cannot get from your primary care provider. Um, so we have a list on our website of the travel Travelers Health Clinics that um, offer yellow fever vaccine in Minnesota. The CDC has a list that provides that more generally nationally for people in other states. So you can take a look at those links to find a location to get that. Or Travelers Health Clinics either offer it or they would tell you where to go if they don't offer it. Oh, okay. Just another tip. I'm so sorry. Just one more thing that came to my mind. 
Um, I think it's important to also consider or enroll in the smart travel. It's called the STEP Smart Travel Enrollment Program. I think that's what it's called, where um, you register with the embassy directly and have access access to information to uh, uh, alerts like um, safety alerts, health alerts, um, just information on things that may be going on in the area. Uh, so it, it, back in the days, we would have to go to the embassy directly and register our trip, uh, but now you can do it online. So smart oh, okay. enrollment program. Uh, okay, I, I searched it and this is what came up. Is this what we're talking about? Yes, yeah. Oh, Step. okay. Okay, great, great, great. Uh, so then when they go on here, maybe they have to create accounts and things like that, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Perfect. Thank you so very much for this great information. Once again, this is Africa. Let's talk. We are having a community conversation on international travel and health, because the important thing about travel is that indeed beyond the fun, beyond the memories, we want to make sure that we stay healthy whilst we are abroad uh, so that indeed the, the travel become very important for that particular reason. Of course, the folks watching on KMTV, you can also keep your comments coming in. Uh, like I said, there's a huge traffic of viewers on that uh, platform. So please, thanks so much for everybody watching. You can definitely keep your comments coming in. Of course, at this point, what we'd like to talk about uh, has to do with um, uh, sharing insights on managing. I know we've actually touched briefly on these things, but then if there's anything else to say about uh, insights on managing health concerns during long travel distance. Um, and again, common health uh, issues travelers may uh, uh, encounter. So the first part is, so if I'm traveling and I'm gonna be in the air for 20 hours or for 18 hours, are there any, uh, things I have to be aware of as compared to somebody who is traveling, let's say, for eight hours. And then the second part of that question has to do with common health issues travelers may encounter. I will come to you, Madam Susanna or MDH, please. All right. So first of all, before pre preparing for your trip, especially if it is a long distance trip, you do want to checking with a primary health care provider if you have any kind of chronic illness that traveling uh, could worsen. So check with your primary health care provider, see if there are any medications uh, that uh, need to be added to your regimen or um, modify if there needs to be some kind of modification to your regimen. Um, general tips for traveling long distance and keeping healthy and safe. Um, during long distance travel, make sure your, first of all, immune system, make sure your immune system is well boosted with healthy eating, hydration, sleep, and so on. And when you're on the plane, make sure you are moving, you're active. Find a reason to walk to the bathroom. If you're unable to move at, at some point, make sure your legs are moving, doing those pedal pushes as if you're driving. Mm -hmm. One, yeah, um, that's a good, um, you know, good thing to do. Um, another thing, sorry. First aid, first aid kit is also a great idea. Make sure you have antihistamines in your first aid kit. Make sure you have cold packs for if there were a case of sunburn. Uh, antihistamine, cold packs pain relief like Tylenol or ibuprofen, making sure that you're aware of the nearest clinic. So do all the, all the research before going in. Make sure you have a clinic that's nearby that could address any emergency or a hospital nearby that could address emergency uh, you know, in case something arises. Um, yeah, and just getting that first aid kit with you, very important. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, MDH, please, Erica or Liz, any addition to uh, this question, please? I had one thing to add, and I couldn't remember which of my colleagues mentioned it here about um, motion sickness medication. Mm -hmm. I would say if you are somebody, who, someone like me who suffers from motion sickness on travel um, and you're taking a long distance flight, make sure to talk to your healthcare provider because sometimes the over-the-counter motion sickness 
like medication that you can get. It may not last as long or you may not be able to take as many in the duration of your flight. Um, like there's a maximum dosage. And so you may have to talk to your healthcare provider and get something else that is longer acting. Um, so just want to remind our viewers out there that might take medication for motion sickness or may suffer from motion sickness. And I will uh, see if Liz has anything else to add to that. Okay. Yeah, I think you, you and Patricia commented on motion sickness perfectly. Um, Susanna commented a lot on the risk of blood clots in the legs that could affect the lungs. That's really important to stay active, stay hydrated. And if you're someone who's at risk of clots, let's say you've had them before, or other people at risk of blood clots are, say, if you're pregnant or if you've just had a baby, um, those would be another important instance to talk to your doctor about it and do all those things Susanna said to try to prevent blood clots. And the last thing that comes up, we all know commonly with long periods of travel is, is a jet lag. And uh, I don't have any uh, perfect easy answers there, but certainly some people do use melatonin to try to reset. Some people try before travel to adjust their sleep schedules as much as is feasible with work and everything else going on in life. Um, but I'd be interested to hear if others have tips with that as well. Okay, all right, I'll before we even go there. Uh, Mr. Beyond. Very important. Okay, in, please go ahead. Susanna's um, travel kit into in her, into her first aid kit. Please add some antidiarrheal. That would be Imodium or Pepto. That's a good one. And mm -hmm. as we're talking about blood clots as well, compression stockings can be your best friend on those long trips. Indeed, no, indeed. I think of all the worst travel health nightmare that anybody ever could encounter diarrhea definitely stands tall because really you don't want to especially when you are abroad you don't want to experience something like that of course we have some questions come in uh from kmtv like uh, a page uh mandela clone jan hine he asked two questions um he says how do you manage uh smokers who are prone to tuberculosis on flights the cabin is small and airborne disease spread fast. I am not sure. I am perfectly understand the question, but uh, I say, how do you manage smokers who are prone to tuberculosis on flight? Oh, okay. So people already smoke, but and they are prone to tuberculosis because of his concern is that the cabin is very small and airtight. Is there any uh, insights into that question, please? I'll just share that anytime you're going to an area where there is tuberculosis, um, regardless of the flight, you want to make sure to talk with your provider about where you went after you return. Uh, because in those cases, if you may have been in an area where tuberculosis is more common than in the U.S., you would then get a test to see if the tuberculosis bacteria got into your body and is kind of asleep there, in which case during that period, if the test is positive, we used to use PPDs but now we have a blood test, then you can treat and prevent it from waking up and causing disease. So I'm really glad you brought up tuberculosis. That's a really important thing to address with your doctor after you get back. And um, as far as the airplane, um, we always wanna be aware of these potential exposures, but um, airplanes do have pretty good circulation of air, believe it or not, even though it's very tight quarters. So um, even when we've had, um, potential cases such as tuberculosis or measles on flights, it spread less than you would think because of that high amount of air circulation that's going on constantly on airplanes. Regardless, if there is a case on an airplane in the US, the health departments will contact the other, work with the CDC to contact other individuals to let them know about the exposure. And then, you know, with measles, there's the opportunity to get a vaccine if you're not vaccinated right away or to be, you know, aware of it. And with tuberculosis, like I said, to be tested and treated if there was an infection going on. So um, that is always something that we look for um, from a health department perspective. Okay. Okay, is, is this situation similar to uh, flight experiences in Africa uh, specifically, or this is very common? It's all, it's all over. And okay. if you feel not comfortable with everything that Liz said, which she did have some great pointers, listen, get your mask and put it on. I just took a flight from Atlanta um, back home to Maryland the other day, and we were three on the flight that had masks. I'm, I'm always going to wear my mask. If you're not comfortable, take your mask and put it on. Okay. 
Absolutely. Uh, of course, uh, there was a question that came in from uh, Pauline. He said, can we share the link? Oh, okay. Can we share the links to the vaccine info in chats? Uh, okay, we'll, we'll do that. I believe it's something that we are able to do. So definitely, uh, we'll be able to share the link uh, for the vaccine info uh, in the chat. But in the meantime, I believe we mentioned that you can go to the CDC uh, website and also, uh, depending on the specific area you are traveling to, you can get that information from. Uh, the next thing that we would like to do uh, has to do with safety tips. Uh, and again, in many of these questions, you may feel like, oh, we, I think we've answered it from that end or whatever, but it's important because for, for this one, we are looking at spring breaks. Um, I know it's quite an exciting time for everyone here abroad and uh, here in the U.S. and abroad. We want to know what are some of the safety tips that travelers should keep in mind when visiting crowded tourist attractions during spring break. Uh, I would like MDH and, and me, again, any panelists to come in with this one. I don't know if anyone else has a comment. I'll just chime in that certainly we want people to be aware of that um, sometimes in the U.S. we will, you know, travel quite a bit um, after dark without much consideration. And in some other locations, that might be something that may not be advised. You want to be aware of your surroundings and be safe. And um, and that may include not traveling after dark either, you know, by walking or even by vehicle. Um, so that's something to be aware of. And um, as, as Patricia mentioned, I'm glad you brought up masks. Now that masks have been more normalized and we have access to them, if you're in a crowded location and you're like, I really don't want to get sick with whatever it might be, um, that's a really good opportunity that, that you can use. Um, those are some initial thoughts. Again, I'm going to mention something that um, we are usually pretty frank about here in the United States, which is about sexual health. And so um, it's really important to take all preventive measures with condoms and any other preventive measures to make sure um, when you're traveling in other countries or in the U.S., you're coming to the U.S. from another country that you take precautions for sexual health. Anyone yeah. else want to comment? Uh, my yeah. only comment uh, would be, like I always tell my traveler, take hold of your travel. Uh, as, a tra as a travel advisor, I may tell you what I'm seeing, uh, I won't be able to get all the information on health advisory, travel warnings, no. Sometimes some things might happen in less than 24 hours and that information is not shared with the travel advisor. So always take hold of your travel, watch your travel surroundings, like Patricia said. Like uh, I will always carry max in my bag. If you're in an area and you see everybody coughing too much, you can just put on your max. So take hold of your travel, I would say to my travel advice, uh, my travelers out there. Okay, great. And also, and, uh, yes, I please. Add, if, 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 if I might add um, one more thing, um, as far as being very cautious of our surroundings, um, if you're going into a club, people are dropping medications in your drinks or drugs into your drinks. So that would be one aspect to when, when it comes to knowing your surroundings or being very careful with, you know, around, around people, you know, to make sure you don't leave your drink unattended and then come back to, to take a sip. Yes. No, it's, it's very important because I can count of all stories that I hear people travel abroad. And I think it's one of the easiest way that they can get killed just because they left their drink or food unattended. Uh, or maybe people that they thought they knew that, but they didn't know. So please, this is very important advice, and thank you so very much. Of course, very soon we're coming to the end of the of the program, but there is also one important thing that I believe it's of great importance when traveling, which is travel insurance. So please, uh, Madam Patricia, I think I will I will ask you on this one, and then we can get the views of other panelists. Uh, can you elaborate on the importance of travel insurance and how it can actually assist travelers? in unforeseen circumstances. Oh, sorry, you're on, you're on mute, sorry. All right, I'm sorry. For Susanna, who is also, you know, she's an avid traveler, she will definitely agree with me on this because when you go into some of these locations and you're putting some good money on your trip, you want your investment to be protected. I'm very, very big on travel insurance because you, uh, and I let my, my travelers know 
there is no way you're going to be paying for a trip that is almost four thousand dollars and you cannot just put a two hundred dollar full coverage insurance on it i mean it should be a no-brainer you know um these um travel insurance will cover your medical evacuation so in the event something happens to you while you're away you can be able to be evacuated from whatever country you know whereas if you did not have that insurance imagine what kind of um you know problem you'll be you'll be posing yourself you know you're in an unknown land and there is no way you can get out of there but with your travel insurance just going the extra mile and paying that little two hundred dollars or 180 on a full travel insurance you are covered um you know um it covers your trip delays if your trip is delayed where sometimes the airline will cover you in a hotel for a certain amount of time if they cannot your trip insurance kicks in to cover your food and lodging while you are you are stranded um another thing is um it protects like i said your financial because it's, it's an investment you're investing in yourself you know when you put up when you're going on these trips you put all your money and also it gives you a peace of mind knowing that if there tomorrow i'm about to travel and i get some kind of emergency i don't worry because guess what i have insurance i can either um be giving a, a ticket that i can do my a, a future travel or if you feel like you don't want to go to that destination any longer you can get your full return on that so your money can be given back to you um on, on, on that also if you're in a in that country your trip insurance can also cover medical emergency if you have to be treated within that hospital so as a travel advisor um i cannot tell you enough whenever you are asked when you're traveling and it's a, um they ask you and offer you the travel insurance take it because it makes your life easier Absolutely. Uh, thank you so very much. Uh, for any of us panelists, uh, have you had an experience or encounter where your travel insurance came in very handy? Is there any experiences that any, any of you can share? I had an experience in Ghana uh, okay. where I was stranded for about four days and um, they took care of my lodging and assisted me to get back on another wow. flight. Wow, for four days lodging in Ghana, I believe will be four quite days. expensive. So clearly, uh, that peace of mind, just because you were able to commit a fraction of money towards insurance, I think it's a very important uh, thing. So thank you so very much for sharing the experience about how important it is to get travel insurance when we travel. Of course, we're coming to the end of the program, but uh, this one, I come to you, Madam Jenny, and of course, Patricia, if you can provide some tips for solo travelers or for families who are actually planning international trips to ensure smooth and enjoyable experience. Like I said, some of the tips may have been mentioned already, but please, for solo travelers or families, because sometimes I think traveling in a group as families, it's quite draining and also very important to keep the details uh, important. So please, if you have any tips that can help them to enjoy smooth and enjoyable experience. Oh, Madam Jenny, please, you're on mute. Yeah, definitely. I have a few tips. Uh, what I would say to my traveler out there, plan ahead. Plan ahead, uh, plan a trip way in advance. We give you the advantage of um, booking accommodation and flight at the best prices and ensure availability during especially the peak season so i always in, encourage them plan ahead the next thing i will want them to do is to uh have your passport ready get visa if you're supposed to mm -hmm. you want to take note of that country uh that you are going always talk to, uh, I'll always recommend a travel advisor. I know most people think that, oh, I, I can just go to the internet to plan my trip. But if you find a travel advisor, it will give you detailed information about your destination and find the best possible price and venue to accommodate your trip. 
and they will even go ahead and share more information and details on your trip while you are going what you should expect that's why i always ask uh travelers out there call a travel advisor talk to one and make sure they help you get to your destination okay thank you so very much for oh, that important yes please also as a solo traveler you want to mm -hmm. pack light and smart because solo travelers, you know, they like they move from place to place. Um, also, I want to piggyback off of what Je um, Jenny said about travel advisors. Like I said, I've been in the business for a, a, a while, and I remember at 9 11, everything changed, and the travel industry went in, you know, shambles. Then we came back, and people started to use travel advisors. I always tell people, let the travel advisor do the work for you. It's okay to go online to, to, to book that travel, but guess what? When you get to your destination and you have problems and issues, who do you ask? Who do you ask? You're not going to go to ASAP tickets and ask them. Believe me, you're not going to get anybody like that. Mm -hmm. They're going to do all the run around. You need an advisor who can advocate for you. I had a group that I did to Cancun about two years ago. One of the person in one of the rooms could not travel. When they got there, they tried to say, oh, um, because that one person did not come, my client could not go to the room. They called me. All I told them was, do me a favor, put your bags down, go and start enjoying your, your travel. Let me take care of it. Mm. I called my people at that resort because I'm an agent. I have a relationship with them. I told them what I had to tell them in my travel language. The next thing I knew, I was telling my client, go to the desk. You have your room and go upstairs. Wow. That's what a travel advisor will do for you because mm -hmm. we know the language. We know what to say. We sell for these people. So you have to make sure my clients are well, you know, they're comfortable and they're going there to enjoy the vacation. So it's okay to go online, but I tell you the best thing to do is to use someone who has been in the business. They know what they're doing and they're there to advocate for you while you enjoy your time away absolutely no this is great this is great insights because yeah many times like you said we may think that oh we can find it from somewhere but it can never be the same as to like i like how you put it like you know the language of the industry you are connected to these people you're actually giving them business so i believe they will listen to you more than they will other people but so thanks so much uh, for this insights ladies uh, for this great conversation i think there was a question that comes in uh maybe it's, it's a more of a comment by um, one Tanu Gibson, he says, Lexis discussion uh, or Lizzie's discussion of some of the solutions when it comes to malaria prevention and treatment is, is quite uh, known, but uh, these strategies have proven to work, but not at the largest level if it would have, or if, or not at the largest level it would if other interventions were implemented, such as improving the community survey or sewer and sanitation systems. Of course, he is advocating for, we can actually have all these things going on, but then wherever we're traveling to. So these are leaderships and uh, uh, leaders in these countries that we travel that, yes, they also need to take steps to keep their community cleaner so that beyond taking these vaccinations, like for malaria, we would have very safe uh, experiences when we travel uh, please at this point would like to take conclusion remarks from you ladies uh, this is quite important conversation that we've had but please i would like to take some conclusion remarks from susanna please if you don't mind to start with us once again thank you so much for having me as part of this panelist i had a lot of fun uh sharing and pre presenting and also learning from uh, my uh, the rest of the panel. Uh, one thing I must mention because I, I work in OB. So from OB standpoint, the second trimester is the best to travel. Uh, but with that being said, you do want to check with your your uh, OB before planning any trips. Um, and thank okay. you again. Once. Absolutely. Thank, thanks for mentioning that. Uh, I think uh, you have many pregnant women want to travel, but of course, it's good to know the right time to do it and to talk to the experts in that industry. Of course, uh, if I can also take your concluding remarks, uh, Madam Patricia. Oh, first of all, I want to say thank you to Kavala Traveling Tours for giving me this opportunity. Um, my sister knows um, how I feel about the travel and health industry. 
These are two things that I'm very, very passionate about. Um, I can't wait to come over to um, Minnesota one of these days and come and visit you, um, Susanna. I've always said I needed one of those IV drips. So when I'm there, I'll make sure to come and see you, Liz and Erica. Thank you so much for your wealth of knowledge. Um, I thank you for giving us this opportunity to get to know more about what is out there, especially if you don't have enough money to go to some of these clinics. There are resources out there that can help you. Mr. Bion, thank you so much. You are great. Um, um, I'm definitely um, looking forward to one of these days again, doing Absolutely. something with you. And Jenny, thank you so much, sis. You're I appreciate welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so very much. Uh, Madam Liz, uh, please, sorry, Dr. Liz, uh, can you please uh, share your concluding remarks with us? And also, there's actually a question that comes in the comments box. Uh, it talks about any recommendations for travel related uh, to the measles outbreak in the U.S. Uh, so please, if you can kind of ch ch chime in on that as well. Yeah, uh, we mentioned measles a couple times and we're getting this question now because it's so important right now. It's really circulating globally in other countries. It's ramping up and also in the U.S. we're seeing more cases than all of last year um, already just by March. So it's just really important to make sure that you go to your doctor and make sure that you are fully vaccinated for measles or if you're bringing children that they're vaccinated and if they're young children, they can get an early vaccine. And those vaccines are really good and they really prevent uh, disease. And so um, uh, we know that measles can be, um, for some people, a mild infection, but sadly um, in, in some, you know, one in a thousand situations can be very serious. And we don't want that to happen to anybody when it's so preventable. So wherever you're going, it might be um, you know, when I was working in Kenya and we had measles outbreaks there, but also, as someone mentioned, in the U.S. And um, you want to think about it wherever you are. So definitely thank you for raising that question. Um, I also just want to mention that after you return from travel, really important to always tell any of your healthcare providers if you're sick, especially if you're sick with a fever, where you've been and when you were there. Um, it could be measles, it could be malaria, typhoid, dengue, and American doctors are not used to treating any of those things and more. So you really have to let them know because it's really important, for instance, with malaria to get treatment right away. Even if you're on prophylaxis, like someone said, bed nets, it's not perfect. Um, and likewise, if someone's tuning in from Africa and they come to visit Minnesota, you know, we have Lyme disease or things like that. And so if you go back and have a fever there and some um, issues, you have to tell them where you've been because they're not used to treating Lyme disease. So it really, it completely depends on where you've been. Just make sure you share that information with your providers. And for concluding remarks, I just really want to thank this fabulous panel, um, Mr. Beyond and everyone on this panel. Thank you so much for having us. And we really hope that everyone listening has safe travels. Safiri Salama. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Dr. Lays. Uh, uh, maybe I can come to you, Erica. Uh, and again, I'm not sure if there's anything else to really touch base on the slide. But if so, please, your concluding remarks. And I'm more than happy to project the slide if I need to. Yeah, thank you so much. Can you hear me okay? It looks like I'm frozen a little bit. Yes, but we can hear you. Okay, wonderful. Then I'll just continue since I know that we're a little bit um, over on time. Mr. Beyond and Jenny, I just wanted to thank both of you so much for having us today. And thank you so much to my wonderful panelists. I've learned a lot of additional extra things about Traveler's Health that I uh, did not know. So I hope our um, audience here today is walking away with information. Um, thank you all so much for your time. And then Mr. Beyond, I know that we had mentioned that there were some comments and questions about getting those links links um, in mm -hmm. some of these slides to folks. So if you need any additional information from us, please let us know and we'll make sure we get all that right information out to our viewers here today. Thank you all so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for the great insights. Uh, Madam Jenny, please, uh, if you can wrap it all up for us and uh, in your concluding remarks. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, let's stop Africa. Mr. Beyond, thank you for hosting us this evening. Thank you to my listening audience, especially my panelists who are much knowledgeable. I guess the audience uh, got a lot of information from us. Uh, so we are grateful for this. Like we said, we are travel advisor. To travel is to live, like it's the slogan we have. We want to make sure our travel community are safe. We don't want uh, too many people getting sick. 
So we thought that we educated that we educate our travelers more about traveling. A lot of people don't know. They just think that it's just I get my passport and my ticket and travel. No, it's just more than that. We want to make sure we keep our travelers safe. To our travelers out there, we will want to say, uh, please, we want to make sure you uh, make travel a fun. So in order to do that, we want to make sure that you check the travel clinic, you have your passport, do a research on country that you are going to, to see if you need anything pertaining to health. So we want to make traveling fun. So I hope this program was more educational for you. This won't be our only program. We got more program coming up. Uh, we will keep all the information online. So maybe after the show, you can go there. Uh, we have a record uh, flyers with me on there too. So you can go back there to the show and get more information. Remember to travel is to live. Uh, to help us make travel more fun. Thank Indeed. You. Wow, thank you. Thank you so very much, uh, ladies, uh, for this great conversation on international travel and health. I truly appreciate all the insights shared. I've learned a lot, and I believe our community has also learned a lot. So have a good good one, and uh, thank you so much. Like uh, you said, uh, we will be getting back to you, MDH, with any uh, additional links, specifically for our conversation and also for our community, so that we will share with them as well. But thank you so much. And of course, to everyone who listened, we say a very big thank you for your time. Really appreciate everyone. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Great. This is how we come to the end of the conversation. And to everyone, I say very one my name is to the team also at KMTV. We say thank you so very much for the collaboration. To everyone who watched and listened and left comments, we say thank you. Have a good one and please stay blessed.